astronomy for humankind. Okay, let's explore this. This very famous picture taken by one of the astronauts on one of the Apollo missions to the moon. A simple picture, but conveys so much about where we are. This place that everything you know as life exists. This place that uh, Carl Sagan so appropriately called the pale blue dot and so eloquently described how everything that we know, every uh, little bit of life, uh, whether it's our loves, our hates, our fears, all contained in this place. This place full of people, seven billion people now. And who are these people? These people that, that have basically dominated this planet to such an extent that we're pushing it to the limits. These people are you and me and everyone we know around us. And these people are individuals who carry on their shoulders one of the most powerful resources that this planet has, and that's the human mind. The mind that's capable of thinking of things just beyond our imagination. These people, individuals, uh, you know, maybe that individual has just had a fight with his girlfriend and he's like really bothered about it. And that's, that's the biggest thing in his life. Or maybe, maybe that girl forgot to put deodorant today and worried that the guy next to her will uh, notice. Um, maybe that person has a little pain in their foot and, that's, and it's the most important thing in their universe. Every one of the individuals on this planet has an entire universe of thought that they carry around, an entire universe that, um, that can be as big or insignificant as we care to imagine. But every one of those minds are capable of realizing that the, that the sun that's shining down on them at the moment is actually this massive ball of burning gases. That if we had to place the Earth next to the sun, it's a little blob there, that about a million Earths would fit into the sun. That the sun is just one star of billions of stars in our galaxy. And if this was our galaxy, our sun would just be one of those. Billions and billions of stars, and those stars could have planets going around them. And some of those planets might even have life. Those minds, every individual mind is capable of realizing that in this picture, which was taken by the Hubble Space Telescope, that every little smudge you see, every little dot, except for one or two stars, every little smudge is an entire galaxy. And every one of those galaxies with billions of stars, and every one of those stars, maybe having planets around, maybe having life, every one of those human minds is capable of stretching to this limit. And when you look at it like this, it's kind of, can be a bit depressing, right? I mean, sheesh, we're, we're just one tiny speck in the grand scheme of things. It might actually uh, cause us to think, well, we're just nobody. Well, at the same time, it could make us think that this is a pretty special place because that's the only place we know that has life. That's the only place we know that has life that's, that's advanced enough to actually question where life came from. Now, what does this have to do with anything we face in everyday life? What does this have to do with the challenges that we have every day? So let me throw some words at you that uh, I want you to think about the effect that it has on your mind. If I say war, what do you think of? War. If I say poverty, what images come to your mind? If I say environmental degradation, what do you think of? Unemployment, fundamentalism, fundamentalism. What's coming to mind? Woman and child abuse. The thing is that astronomy, this, this stretching of minds, also gives us the ability to question and to think about the inbred biases that we have. I mean, when, you, when, when I said war, who were the good guys? Who were the bad guys in your war? Was it the invaders of a country or the country being invaded? When I said poverty, what is the skin color of the people that you imagine? Same for unemployment. 
How many of those, those were in first world countries? When I say environmental degradation, how far did your mind go from your rubbish bin outside your house, where that goes? When I say fundamentalism, did anyone associate it with the religion? Did you, did you uh, uh, maybe think of those, those, those uh, hardcore atheists that really refused to have any notion of a religion or a god? Maybe when I said fundamentalism, you thought of those people who uphold laws to the point where you persecute even people who question those laws for the good of humankind. When I said women and child abuse, how many of you thought about, about the, the unconscious gender bias that we find in all of society? The thing about astronomy is that it pushes us to think. It pushes us, it takes us on this journey out there, it stretches our mind, it pokes it, it chews it up and spits us out back down to earth. And when we come back to earth, if we bring this mental exercise that we have, then we look at the world differently. We approach problems differently. And this is the strength that astronomy brings. But why astronomy? I mean, other things do this. Humanities, the, the, the poetry, music, the arts, all this also stretch us to think. Absolutely, and it's also the technology, uh, uh, um, the, 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 the instruments that we use push innovation. But other sciences as well, you know, the biology, the chemistry, all these areas, whether it's the cultural part, the humanities, the technology, the science, they're all things that make us think. So why am I talking about astronomy? I'm not here to try and say we should invest in astronomy. I'm not here to try and say astronomy is this thing that will change the world. I'm here because I want to make a difference in the world. And I see astronomy as a really cool tool for that. And the reason is that astronomy overlaps and straddles all these areas. From the massive technology that we need to be able to catch this light that's coming from billions of light years away. The big telescopes we build, the big data that we need to process, the science that's involved in astronomy. It's not just the physics and mathematics, but the chemistry, the biology. All that we need to explore the universe. But it's also the cultural aspects of astronomy. The fact that astronomy has one of these, these links to just about every culture on this planet. That if we go back, the, the, the basic things, the, 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 the moon, the stars, the sun, a simple thing like night and day, it captured the imaginations of human beings for as long as we've been able to think. And this is why astronomy is such a powerful tool to make us think, to stretch our minds, and to make us approach problems in this world. I mean, imagine, imagine if we take the technology from astronomy the, 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 the ability to, 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 to capture these whispers of light and, and figure out how far that star is, what's it made of, how hot is it, is it moving towards us, away from us, how do we do that? That innovation, that ingenuity, imagine taking that and applying it to the problems that we have in this world. Imagine taking uh, uh, all those sciences that astronomy stimulates, putting it in a university in, in some otherwise isolated region, and, and, and doing science in a place w simply because of the open access to data that we have. Imagine taking this hold that astronomy has on our culture and inspiring people to, to, to be more tolerant, to approach life differently. This is what astronomy can do. So what is being done? Well, we've... we've uh, um, so the... The International Astronomical Union has developed a strategic plan. And this is the cover of this plan. And it's basically, uh, who are these people? Well, the International Astronomical Union, this is the, it's the international body of astronomers. There's over 10,000 professional astronomers, and they sort of safeguard the science of astronomy. They have the power to name and shame planets. You guys know about Pluto. There, there is some body that, that, that needs, to, uh, uh, needs to maintain the standards of, uh, of astronomy, and this is, this is them. This is this professional body, and they decided, look, astronomy can make a huge impact in the world. So let's, 
let's, let's develop a plan that will realize its benefit in all those areas, whether it's technology, science, or culture. At the moment, we've got over 200 projects across the world that's linked to this plan. And, uh, um, and we're setting out to, to make these projects happen with only about, uh, with a budget that will fund about 5% of them directly. But things are hopeful, and it's built on, on, on the success of this big international year of astronomy, where it reached over 800 million people across the world. No one was more surprised than the astronomers themselves. Man, this is, this is really something that captures one's imagination. And so, um, uh, of all these projects, I want to just focus on one of the international projects. It's something called the, the Universe Awareness Program. And the Universe Awareness Program is all about trying to inspire young children with the beauty and scale of the universe. And this, uh, this little tool, this resource, uh, has become quite uh, uh, um, uh, 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 identifiable with this program. Uh, it's, it's an Earth ball. It's an inflatable globe that's made up of satellite images of the Earth. And it's, it's been used all over the world to inspire young children about true perspective of where we live. Um, you know, for example, uh, uh, you know, which way is up here? You know, is, is Africa supposed to be this way or is it supposed to be this way? Uh, out in space, does it really matter? Why do we have all our maps in this direction? This is the stuff that we make young children think about. Uh, imagine if the global south was actually on top. How would that change our thinking about, about the world? So, uh, um, so one of the reasons that this, this, this project is also a bit special to me is that, uh, you know, I, I was one of those kids. I, 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 grew up, uh, I grew up in a rural part of South Africa, and, uh, um, and we had the best skies in the world. But you know what? I almost never looked at it. Because when we were kids, they told us that if we counted the stars, we'd get warts. And so I grew up under this beautiful sky and, like, you know, avoided looking at it. I really don't want that to happen to other children around the world. When I got to high school, I started learning about what the moon was and I started questioning. It didn't make sense to get warts from counting stars. And it opened my mind. And the one thought that, that ran through you know, my studies in physics was, you know, looking at the moon, simple object, and thinking about what the moon sees. Now, do we want all these, these, these kids to become scientists? No, not, not really. In fact, uh, uh, when, we, when we think about uh, uh, um, the holders of our knowledge, the custodians of the, the most advanced knowledge, sometimes, you know, the... The people that create the science, the academics, they're sometimes the ones with the biggest egos. They're sometimes the ones with the biggest unconscious gender biases and most disconnect with humanity. You know what I'm talking about. I mean, the, 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 the point I'm making is that we don't necessarily want everyone to be at the forefront of creating knowledge. But sometimes we get so caught up in that that we lose touch with humanity. We need... You know, how, how, how can we say that we're expanding the knowledge of humankind if we don't spread that knowledge to all of humanity? When we, um, when we talk about a future of who knows what, uh, in this future, which hopefully will be a much brighter one, in order for it to be brighter, I think at the end of the day, the who has to be the majority of the world. And the what needs to be those inspiring aspects of our science, of our knowledge, that makes us think, that pushes our minds, that gives us perspective of the world. It's only then that our knowledge can really make a difference. Now, um, producing the science is an important part. And it is important for us to, uh, uh, to continue pushing our understanding of the universe. It's those big ideas that we need to get back. If you as a scientist uh, uh, can't explain to a person in the street what science you're doing, where does it fit into everything, then you've not arrived. I think that uh, uh, you know, as we 
as we push forward, um, we, we want to reach a stage where every, every person in this world has a perspective of the universe, the perspective something similar to what I gave you at the beginning. But it's, it's, it's the reality that sometimes we will forget. You know, sometimes we get caught up in our daily lives and you leave this room and you forget what I said. But imagine if we hooked a message of peace to the moon. Imagine if we hooked messages of hope to the stars, such that every time someone saw it, they remembered. They remembered what the moon and the stars see. Astronomy is, is an endless source of renewable, sustainable energy for the human mind. Inspire thought. If we can influence the thinking of human beings, then we can influence the trajectory of our planet. Thank you very much.